Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. Welcome to a Winter Ween reading vlog. So for those of you who don't know, Winter Ween is a week-long reading challenge hosted by Gabby Reads and Olivia Reads a Latte, and it's basically they provide several prompts to read several winter-themed books. Winter Ween is running from January 3rd to January 9th, and there are five prompts. Read a book in the dark or at night. Read a book with a winter setting. Read a book with snow on the cover, read a novella, and read a book that gives you thrills and chills. Uh, it is currently the sixth day of Winterween. I've tried vlogging all this week, but I was really not feeling well. Anyway, I'm starting to feel a little bit better, but during all this, I've been reading No Exit, which it meets the criteria for several prompts. It has snow on the cover, it's giving me thrills and chills, and it's really good. This book has been hyped up a lot on booktube and bookstagram. This is a thriller about a young woman who's traveling home for the holidays during a snowstorm to see her mother, and because of the snowstorm and the hazardous road conditions, she has to pull into a rest stop, and while she's there, she notices that a child is kidnapped in the back of somebody's van. She decides that she's going to take matters into her own hands and try to save this girl. This book is really, it is fast paced. You get right into the action. It wastes no time setting things up. First chapter, she gets into that rest stop. She sees this little girl and she enacts her plan. And it's just really interesting because it makes you ask yourself the questions of what you would do in that situation. Would you just let it slide? Wait till authorities come? Would you involve other people in that situation? She's in a rest stop with a bunch of strangers and she doesn't know whose car it is. There's a lot of mystery behind it and about a hundred pages in there was a revelation of who the killer was or who, who the kidnapper was and I was I was pleasantly surprised. It's really fun and it's really the action is great. Like I feel the action. I my heart races for this character. She's out in the elements at certain points of the story. There's one scene in particular that really bothered me where she gets a, a bag put over her head and you feel you feel like you have that bag over your head and I just was holding my breath. It just it feels very immersive and there's a lot of things that are horrifying about this situation. There's the weather conditions, the isolation, along with the kidnapping and being trapped with a dangerous person. And I'm just really liking it so far. I like where it's going and I feel like it's playing out like a movie. So I, I really am thinking this is living up to the hype. We'll see how it goes, how it ends. That's usually where books fall apart for me. I'm on page 204. There's like 350 pages. So it's really good. And I just received this in the mail, Stolen Tongues, which is another wintry themed cover. This book has been receiving a lot of hype on BookTube, BookTok, but Bookstagram as being really scary. People have told me that this book has a really terrifying prologue. So I believe that this is a story that was once posted on Reddit it, no sleep and then it was just really popular and the author published it. I believe this is self-published. Yeah originally a contest winning story. So it's about a man and his wife who are staying at this remote cabin and weird stuff starts happening. That's all I really know. I think it's about a wendigo but we'll find out. I'm really hoping to get to this too. So I'm hoping to finish this with by tonight maybe and then get started on this because because I really, really want to read this too, and I would be really proud of myself if I read two books in a week. Stay tuned if you want to see how these books go for me. So I'm just popping in here to say that one of the things I think this book does really well is it created a really good villain. The villain is someone who seems so normal on the surface, but you know deep down there's a lot of messed up stuff going on. We get a little bit of insight into what their childhood was like that made them like this, and they're just very vicious and unpredictable, and yeah, that un unpredictability scares me. <laughs> like, you don't know what's gonna happen. I feel like everybody is, every 
everybody's lives are at stake here because of the unpredictability of the villain. So I don't know where it's going, but I think that the villain is pretty dead on. Like I feel like this would be a real a real person in real life. The way their motivations, the way their mind works, and how they use violence to get what they want and they get off on the violence and it's just I think it's done really well. I also will say I really like the main character. I was a little iffy about her at first because I was like, she doesn't really feel like a woman <laughs> because it's written by a man, but I do like her. I think she's strong and she's spunky and she is, she thinks very well on her feet. And I just think that I love that she's got like a mouth on her. Like she's not afraid to shit talk the villain. And I just, I'm loving watching this cat and mouse game. And in the beginning of the book, the cat and mouse game, it was happening between the two of them and nobody else was aware of it. It was just like a, a sparring between their two, like just them, their eyes visually, like in, like in front of each other back and forth and nobody else was aware of it. That is tension perfect i loved how those moments were built up and you're like oh my god what is gonna happen anything could happen he's uh, this person is unhinged is she gonna tell other people that this person is a bad person it's just the stakes are high the circumstances are horrifying and i just think it's really well done it's well paced and very descriptive i just i'm really liking it i'm really liking it say something my neighbor is screaming at the top of her lungs right now which is just the ambiance i need it is the perfect reading ambiance also i don't trust anyone i don't trust a single fucking soul in this book because everybody's a suspect everybody is a suspect and i think our main character has a poor judge of character in others because she keeps getting tricked which i would also easily be tripped up because I'm a bad judge of character too, apparently. So yeah, everyone's a suspect. And I like that about this. You can't trust anybody. You can't trust anybody, especially on the road, especially on the road. I'm getting very anxious and I want to tell you about it, but I don't want to spoil it for you. But there are so many twists that are done pretty well. I mean, I kind of suspected this in the beginning, but then they make you feel okay and they make you forget about it. And then it comes back and you're like, okay, okay, wow, wow. I don't know how she's going to get out of this situation. I, I don't know how this is going to play out. And now we're headed into the witching hour. <sighs> she cramped my stomach. My stomach just growled. Wow. It is Friday, January 7th, and I have finished No Exit. This book was such a satisfying read, and it definitely lived up to the hype that everybody gives it. I was thrilled from the very first page all, all the way to the last. It was such a satisfying read. It's a situation I could see being real, but also it's a little exaggerated, but it's just incredible to go on this ride with this main character who's just an average girl in a dangerous situation, and she's stepping up to be a hero. She's somebody that I wish I 
I hope I would be if I were in that situation, although I don't know if I could because a lot happens. It has one of the most despicable villains I have ever read and they're just so believable. I feel like every step of the way is just, it's just pure insanity and every time you think that the situation is going to get better and that our main character is going to have the upper hand, the rug is pulled out from underneath her feet and it just gets worse and worse. You're like, oh my god, how much more can this girl take? And the villain is almost, yes, while he has actual real characteristics and he could be a real person, he also has like this supernatural villain quality of like a Freddy Krueger or a Jason. Like he will not stop. And it's just this really enticing, captivating cat and mouse game between these two and it feels like it's this huge battle between good and evil and it's just two, it's just people battling it out and they're both so stubborn in their own ways and I just feel like they really, this author created such interesting characters and the dynamic between the villain and the main character is so endearing to read. It's just, I loved it. I loved every, every piece of this story. It was exhausting to read. It reminded me of an early 2000s psychotic thriller starring Kevin Bacon as the villain, and that is not a bad thing. I love early 2000s psychotic thrillers. Perfect read. I'm so glad I picked it up. Now, I'm hoping to move on to Stolen Tongues tonight. I have, what, three days left of this Winter Ween readathon, so hopefully I, I can finish this, start and finish it by the end of Winter Ween. We'll see. We'll see. I will touch back when I have a little bit more to say about this. We had a snowstorm last night, so it's just, I'm having that. It's that atmosphere, that perfect snowy atmosphere I need for this weekend to just feel snowed in and cold. Maybe I'll read this tonight at night in the dark to check off another prompt. Winter Ween so far is good. It is off to a great start, so stay tuned. Update time. I am about 64 pages into this story and I just got through part one. It's pretty creepy. I do, I will give it that. So we're following this couple who are staying at a cabin that is the cabin of one of their parents. They let them stay there because they're recently engaged and they let them have like a little, a little getaway in their cabin. So while they're there, immediately weird things start happening. They find a weird, creepy handmade dream catcher hanging up in the trees and then they just start hearing voices throughout their stay and they don't know where it's coming from. The wife or the fiance suffers from night terrors and sleepwalking which also comes into play to the story. They're, they're kind of isolated and trapped in this this cabin because a snowstorm they, they got snowed in so it's just a really creepy unsettling feeling while reading it and I'm sitting here, we had a snowstorm, I feel like I can't leave and it's just, it's getting under my skin a little bit and it just feels very trippy and dreamlike. They got, they got in touch with the fiance's parents who were the ones who, it's their cabin, they let them stay there and they're like, they haven't stayed there in like a decade and they're like, have you ever experienced anything weird there? And the mom's like, well actually, yeah. And it's like, thanks a lot, mom. Why the fuck did you send me to this cabin where you knew this shit was happening? But anyway, also the prologue was creepy, but it wasn't as creepy. I feel like people overhyped this and that's my problem. I wish I heard nothing of this book before going into it because no matter what, it's not going to meet my expectations. January 8th, Saturday, and I am still reading Stolen Tongues. I'm about 114 pages in, and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's really creepy, and there's just a section I got to where he's talking about watching X-Files with his, his fiance, and that is exactly what the book is reminding me of. It's reminding me of an X-Files episode. Just the weird, trippy atmosphere, and everything just feels very surreal and it's just it's like a slow a slow quiet horror barlow is snuggled up in in between my feet and we're gonna read some more today i'm hoping to get 100 pages in because i want to finish this i want to finish this for winter ween hello 
It is later in the evening. I've finally showered and washed my hair. I'm in my jammies and I've read another hundred pages of this. I am 200 pages into this 300 page book. I feel like I'm seeing the criticisms now. First 150 pages of this book are great. They're really unsettling, very atmospheric, and the author did a really good job of painting <laughs> this picture of weird stuff going on, weird unexplainable stuff. And it it's this situation where it's not the place that is haunted, it is the people, the person. It's giving me paranormal activity vibes in that sense. But I do feel like it's a bit long of a book and now things are feeling dragged out and repetitive where the same thing happens every night. We see them go to bed, talk in the, in the morning, and then go to bed and weird stuff happens. It's just like rinse and repeat. And I feel like now stuff is being added to the story that's really confusing me and it almost feels like it's just being tacked on to give more length to the story. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but I'm kind of starting to get bored. So it is Sunday, January 9th. It is the final day of winter ween and I have gotten a very late start to the day because this guy over here was up all night with stomach issues. So that means I was up all night with stomach issues because I had to take him out constantly. So I've just been a freaking bundle of nerves and worried about him and his gut health. I gotta, I got, I still have to finish stolen tongues, but I also have to go to the grocery store and buy Barlow some bland chicken and rice to boil for him so it can soothe his stomach. And then, then I'm just gonna sit down and read and hopefully finish this book because I want to complete Winter Ween on a high note and I only have 100 pages left. I can do it. I can do it. That was dumb. Listen, this book, the first 150 pages of this book are so good. It is creating such a tense, tense atmosphere where you don't know what's going on. It's very surreal and there's a lot of creepy shit happening. The, I think this just suffers from being way too long. This should have been a short story. The whole, once I got to the page 150 and it tried to explain things it just got so convoluted and it just felt all over the place the last 100 pages i don't even know what the fuck is going on i had no idea what was going on and there was all this explanations and all this shit brought in from the 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 fiance's past and I don't know how they were related and it just feels like the author was didn't know how to how to bring this story around and he didn't do it well. I'm confused. It was so good in the beginning. And then yeah, it just got very repetitive. Same shit, different day. Same stuff happening over and over again and it's like, "Okay, I get it. She's creepy and she's vomiting shit. She's like possessed." But yeah, let's invite her sister and her sister's little baby over to stay with us for a while. I mean, I know she's, you know, she's fucked up and everything and kind of dangerous, but let's put this baby in her vicinity. That makes total sense. And also, this fiance's parents, they know shit, they know secrets, and they're withholding information from the fiance as he's trying to investigate. They know their daughter is like on the brink of having an, something going on. She's like probably gonna die and they're still keeping it a secret because they don't wanna share those secrets. I, it doesn't make sense. Why would you do that to your daughter? Why wouldn't you just do whatever is in her best interest? I don't know. And then there was this, I, 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 I I don't even know what happened in the end. I'm just, I don't even know. There was like all this stuff. There, there was none of these characters served anything to this story. And then there's this whole section in the end about use, writing about Native Americans when you're not a native and how he didn't want to like stereotype anybody. He was like, ultimately I decided to write about natives simply as people and try to avoid the common stereotypes that harm their communities while writing about stereotypes 
This whole fucking book is a, a stereotype about a Native American fucking legend. I don't know because everybody said this book is so good and it's terrifying and yes the first 150 pages great but then as you start to read it just falls apart it's all over the place and you can tell this was a reddit story it just felt like he was just trying to add stuff to make it more compelling but it wasn't compelling but i did it i finished two books two books for winter ween i completed everything i wanted to complete for winter ween it was pretty successful i'm pretty excited and happy about it and i love the spooky readathons let me know if you participated and let me know what you read if you read the books i read what you thought of stolen tongues and yeah Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll catch you next time.